Hi guys. Um, I think it's my first time to show my face on YouTube. Um, uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Hikyam Kim. I am an illustrator and designer. In today's video, I'll be sharing my favorite supplies in the order of paper, sketchbook, color pencil, um, gouache, and digital tools. And I'll be answering some of the questions I received through Instagram, so please stay tuned. And before we start, please keep in mind that these are just my own thoughts based on personal experience. You may have different thoughts and opinion and experience. <laughs> um, so let's get started. Let's start by talking about sketchbooks. I received a question about the brand and the size of the sketchbook I use, and I'm happy to share my thoughts with you. First off, I should mention that I like to keep two sketchbooks at all times, one ugly sketchbook and one pretty sketchbook. For my ugly sketchbook, I just use any random thread bond notebook. Here are a couple of ugly sketchbooks I've been using lately. Uh, um, Lutrum 1917, I'm not sure about the pronunciation, but um, and also not sure if that's the full brand name or if the number on the back is the name of the sketchbook. But well, this is the brand that I used. That's about five and a half uh, by eight inches, and a moleskin notebook that's um seven and a half by nine and three quarter inches. I mostly doodle, make thumbnail sketches, and jot down my thoughts and ideas with pencil here, so I don't need any fancy or thick paper for this. I prefer thread-bound sketchbooks over wire-bound because it just looks fancy, isn't it? Now let's talk about my pretty sketchbook. I've been using the Moleskine Art Sketchbook, which measures about 5 and uh, five by 8.5 inches. I absolutely love the size. It's narrow and perfect for either using at home or carrying around. The paper is smooth and thick enough to use with wet mediums too. But if you're a watercolor painter, I recommend to use watercolor sketchbook. I also have the same moleskin sketchbook in different sizes, square and the letter size. However, I wouldn't recommend using the square sketchbook for wet mediums as the paper is a bit thinner than the regular one. I received a lot of questions about how I avoid getting smudges on the other side of the paper if I use both sides for drawing. Well, here's my secret, the pencil board. This was a must-have when I was a kid in Korea and every kid had one. I insert this board behind the paper I'm drawing on and it prevents any pencil marks from transferring to the back side of the paper. And for keeping the drawing clean afterwards, I just don't care too much and don't see much color staining on each other side. If I, if I really want to protect the drawing, then I'll insert the tissue paper between the pages, but I normally just leave them as they are. Let's move on to papers. Someone asked me what is your favorite paper for final pieces and sketches. As I mentioned earlier, for sketching, I use the Moleskine Art Sketchbook and Arche Hot Press watercolor paper for my final pieces. I prefer using fine textured paper with some thickness for my mixed media and colored pencil work. My favorite brand for this is Arche Hot Press 300g, although Stone and Chop Press paper is equally good. I typically buy either a 9x12 watercolor block or a, just a piece of 20x30 sheet and cut the paper to the size I need. I also love the 7x10 size. Strasmore Mixed Media 300g paper is also a good option. If you are looking for a luxurious paper for dry medium to work with, I highly recommend the Sennelier oil pastel pad. It's incredibly smooth and even mm -hmm. comes with wax paper between every page. However, this paper is pretty expensive. I use this paper for illustrating my Blue the Bear picture book. And let's move to color pencils. Many people have been asking me about my favorite brand of color pencils. 
So to give you the answer right away, my favorite brand is Caran Dash Luminance. It is amazing. I used to use Prismacolor, but when I switched to Luminance, it felt like heaven. It slides on paper very smooth, it has a buttery texture, and the colors are rich and vibrant. I also use Caran Dash Pablo along with Luminance. Comparing to Luminance, Pablo has a harder core, which makes it better for drawing details. Also, Pablo has a less saturated color range, so it makes a good combination. You may be interested to know which is better between Luminance and Prismacolors. In my personal opinion, Luminance is better. The colors are more vivid and rich, the core is harder and less breakable, and it also has a light fastness effect, which means the color remains for up to 100 years. The only downside of these pencils is the price. They are pretty expensive with a single pencil cost about $3.36 compared to Prismacolors $1.39. But Prismacolors are also good. They are professional grade in an affordable price range. They have a waxier texture than Luminance in my opinion and have a wider color range than Luminance. So if you want to try out color pencils, I recommend starting out with Prismacolors. So wax based or oil based? I didn't really pay attention to my color pencils whether they are wax based or oil based. I dig up a little bit and found out Caran Dash Luminance, Pablo and Prismacolors are wax based. According to my research, wax based binders make the color pencils have a soft core and blend better. Oil based binders make the core harder, which is good for details. Faber Castell Polychromos color pencils are oil based. I do have one Polychromos pencil which I bought just for the color, but now I am interested in trying other colors. There are also water soluble color pencils which turns into watercolor when you add water. Somebody asked me if I always keep color pencils sharp. The answer is no. I prefer having sharp tip when I draw along the lines or details, but when I need to fill up a big space, I don't care. And the best sharpener for color pencils. I have two sharpeners. One is from Dux and the other one is from Muji. I mostly use Dux for luminous pencils. The size of the hole is perfect for luminous. And Muji sharpener for Pablo or sometimes for Prismacolor. I also use nail pastel sometimes. It is very opaque and layer on almost everything. So let's talk about the gouache. I use both acrylic gouache and watercolor gouache. Acrylic gouache acts more like acrylic paint but easier to use. I am using Holbein acrylic gouache but haven't tried other brands yet. Watercolor gouache is more like a traditional gouache. It is similar to watercolor but more opaque version. Unlike watercolor, I am supposed to use white to control the brightness of the color, but I ignore what I'm told. I just use them whatever I want to. I sometimes use watercolor gouache like watercolor or even mix watercolor gouache with acrylic gouache. I don't know if I can do that, but well, I just do. The color I'm painting in the video is a mix of watercolor gouache and the acrylic gouache. I really love this brand. It's called Sui. It has a very beautiful pastel range. I especially love this color. And let's move on to talk about digital tools. I mostly work with analog, but I do paint digitally too, especially when I need to work on client projects and especially when I work with clients in Korea. They sometimes freaked out to find out that the drawings they saw on my portfolio is done with gouache and color pencils, so I had to force myself to draw digitally. But even if you don't work digitally, having some digital knowledge is always useful. I will just show you what tools I have to digitize my traditional artwork and what do I use to draw digitally.
So the first one is Skinner. Mine is Epson Perfection V600. I bought this, um, I don't know, about five years ago maybe. It was about $200 or so. This scans up to A4. So when I need to scan bigger size than this, I scan several times and pin together. And the printer I use is Epson P800. It has 10 ink cartridges, print amazing archival quality. Cone is expensive ink cartridge. I use 12.9 inch 5th um, generation IP Pro with Procreate and Apple Pencil. I'm still practicing draw digitally, but my latest favorite brushes are Adilson Furious watercolor brush and Bardo gouache brush set and default 6B pencil brush. These are the drawings I made for clients. This was done solely by Procreate, but I sometimes work analog for a scan and add details like letters in Procreate. I also do color plan in Procreate. Making final sketches in Procreate also makes my life easier. Okay, I think this is it. I even made a wash tub with my favorite um, art supplies. Look at this. I don't know if you can see. So these are basically the art supplies that I love to use. Of course, there are many other great art supplies out there, but um, these are basically my I am enjoying personally. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment. Um, yep. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon in the next one. Bye.